The Firearms Radio Network provides the bandwidth for this edition of the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Podcast. Welcome to the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Review Podcast, episode 398. We showcase gun reviews, gear, and anything else you, as a gun enthusiast, may be looking for. We strive to evaluate products from an unbiased and honest perspective. I'm your host, Chad Wallace, and in this show we'll be discussing another mini red dot, receivers, slides, and a fixed blade. This show is brought to you by our friends over at Primary Arms. Primary Arms seeks to provide the best shopping experience for everything firearms. With over 13,000 products from your favorite brands, heck, it's probably up more like 15,000 now. It seems like they keep adding stuff left and right. But Primary Arms carries a complete selection of rifles, handguns, firearm parts, and shooting gear. Every order comes with a commitment to superior service, fast shipping, and an expert support team. And thanks to Zane, he didn't know it, but our Primary Arms product of the week this week is the Magpul MOE Grip. (laughs) So... You guys can go check that out because it's a good everyday standby grip that everybody likes. I mean, I'm a fan. It, so. Well, you mentioned it enough last week or the week before that I was like, I'm putting it in this week. <laughs> grip. That's right. <coughs> you guys are killing yeah, me. Tony see? likes the A2 grip. Yeah, Tony likes the A2 grip. So. so you can go over to Primary Arms and sign up for their newsletter or and specials and everything else at frn.deal slash pa and also if you buy a primary arms branded optic and use the code frn you will get a free mount for that optic uh as you may have heard with me tonight are tony rob and zane and i'm guessing that zane might be the only one here that did anything with firearms yeah i've been dealing with uh, family issues for the last few weeks so yeah and i didn't do that yeah, and I didn't do anything, so... And Tony's probably still moving. Well, I actually moved all of my firearms into one spot, and I've discovered that <clears throat> I've counted, uh, actually, how many firearms I had, and it's enough to make certain people in conversation uncomfortable. So it's two. <laughs> well, not in this conversation, I can tell you that no, much. Yeah, not, not with us, and not with my friends, but with anybody who yeah. thinks it's normal maybe to have a rifle, a shotgun, and a handgun. Yeah, those people will get uncomfortable. Yeah, because yeah, Tony threw me the number. I'm like, here, hold my beer. <laughs> yeah, <he's laughs> exactly. Like, those are rookie numbers. you got to get those numbers <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, come on, come on. <laughs> You're a Marine. I thought you'd be like, come on, come on, Florida boy. Be a Florida man. It'll change. So, Zane, <clears throat> did you do anything then? I feel like it, but I can't remember. <laughs> well... So, no? So, it sounds like Zane drank too much, which isn't firearms yeah, related. alcohol, but, right? Yep. Eh, well, yeah. you know, par for the course. Win in Rome or win in Florida. Do as Florida man. Wait, do Florida man. Did you gra- steal a gator and try to throw it through a drive through window or something? First of all, that was like four years ago, and <laughs> it was not me, and it was a Wendy's drive through yeah. And no. Okay. I did not. Okay. So... <laughs> I guess we're done with that. Uh, bandwidth sponsor, Patriot Patchco. Of course, Tony, I don't know if he was trying to talk or if he was just muted or what he's doing, but he was laughing. So uh, don't forget to join their Patch of the Month Club. You got the Turkinator and and the special Live Every Day Like It's Black Friday with the nods on the, you know, that, they're pretty cool, so... Check them out and all the other cool and, stuff. And they support the Firearms Radio Network, and they support us in our podcasting efforts. So please support them. Yes, please support them. They make cool stuff, and it's not just patches. They do all kinds of stuff over there. Uh, now, because it's starting to get towards the holidays, we have all our affiliates or discounts, depending on which is which. Uh, there's the Gun Guys Garage one, so you can go over there and use the pound for pound. And that's just a straight discount code for the largest discount he gives. <laughs> I think it's like, what do you say, 17.2% or something? So, And then we have affiliates for Brownells, uh, LA Police Gear, Amazon, Addible Optics, Matador Arms ones down right now. But you can still go check them out. Uh, and then there's Walker Defense Research. They also have a 15% off code. And the Addible has a 20% off code. And... You can get these awesome kilt in the streets patches from us because you know they'd be great to shove in somebody's stocking, but 
that's for next week. <laughs> Are we doing that next week? Yeah. Did you not read the, the, the email? I mean, I read it. I don't know how to read, so I don't know. Okay. Well, yes, it's and it's down in the bottom of next wrap up. So yeah, next mm. week, next. I guess we'll, you let it out of the bag now. Next week's our Christmas gift guide episode thing where we all pick some things that we might want or that you should buy people like us. Rob, you're back. I am back after two week hiatus. Yeah, and Zane Zane did it from memory, and he he did okay. <laughs> The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual co-hosts and do not reflect the official policy or position of the Firearms Radio Network and or their employers. This is not legal advice, nor should it be considered as such. Viewer discretion is advised. This is especially true on live shows. And since we do have a topic tonight, we do have a main topic sponsor, Midwest Firearm Solutions. For custom Cerakote to laser engravings, Midwest Firearm Solutions has you covered for anything your custom gun might for anything custom you might want. There you go. Mention Gun and Gear Review Podcast for 10% off Sarah Coding. Forget what I said. You go there, mention Gun and Gear, Repo- uh, Gun and Gear Review Podcast, and they'll give you 10% off. Great great job. They do a good job. And <laughs> now for the main product top, the main product review or update. I thought I was the drunk one. <laughs> no, I am the no, drunk no, one. He, well, in well, see, before Zane, side of Florida. before Zane got on, I'm pretty sure I saw Rob pouring, pouring himself a drink. Yeah, a drink, yeah. I, so I don't Remember, know if this was the Chad, first or the tenth. Two fingers. Two fingers, like this? Two fingers. Like this? That's yeah, what, your, your pinky and your index finger are two fingers. <laughs> oh, I, I, <laughs> that's, how you, that's how you measure drinks. Oh, okay. That, that is definitely what she said. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> and okay, so Chad, tell us about the PowerTech e, <laughs> E9RG4. I, Jeez, why can't they come up with simple names for these for these uh, lights? I I don't know, but I will tell you about it. So it's an actual review. We'll get on. Uh, they actually contacted me about reviewing one of their flashlights, uh, and you know, only knowing a little bit about them, I was pretty hesitant. Well, after getting the light, I shouldn't have been hesitant. Uh, they they sent this E nine R G four tactical light as they call it out. Of course, the E nine is the model. The G four just means it's the fourth generation of the light. Uh, this light actually turned out way better than I expected. It is a useful handheld light, uh, and as always, it's got plenty of features. So if you're one of these feature guys, gals, or anywhere, Tonys. <laughs> You, you you know, and they rival some of the more expensive lights. Uh, of course, high on the priority list for me anyway is that in this type of light, it uses an 18650 rechargeable battery because I have like a bunch of them uh, and they always produce good light or power usually. Uh, it comes with one 30 to 200 milliamp hour high discharge battery. Uh the light will also work with two CR123 batteries. Uh, if you're using the CR123s, the max output is limited quite a bit. Uh, the light does come with extra O-rings, a lanyard, a magnetic USB charging cord. The magnetic charging cord's useful. Uh, it just kind of snaps onto the light to charge it, and you plug it into a USB port on the other end. But if that doesn't work for you or you don't like that... Uh, you can ch- pull out the little piece where this little magnetic charger goes, and it's a m- micro USB connector, so you can use w- whatever you want to charge it that way. Of course, it's got a little light on it that shines red when it's charging and blue when it's fully fully charged. The operation of the E9 is pretty easy, self-explanatory for the most part. You know, you push the tail cap lightly, and you know, momentary on. If you keep going and it clicks, then it stays on for constant on. Uh, it it does stay on the previously used setting, which we'll go over here in a little bit. Uh, the It has six adjustment settings. Uh, the settings are done with a button on the side of the end cap uh, or tail cap, depending on what you want. So you push, you push the light on, then you can use it to cycle through the different brightness levels, and no matter what brightness level it's on, if you turn it off and then it comes back on, 
at the same brightness level. Uh, if it is off, that button is a strobe, so you hold it down and it strobes. Uh, I'm not keen on strobes because I never use them, but it's there if you like it. Uh, the modes it has, uh, they have a Firefly setting, which is pretty cool. It's like 0.64 lumens. It's probably the only one I can actually shine into the light on my camera here. Uh, and then the next one, low is at 71 lumens, medium is 270, high is 1135, and then it has the turbo at 2550, which is its brightest setting. And if you're watching the video, you can see me cycling through them. Uh, they're rated to the ANSI FL1 standard, uh, at least they're rated to something. Uh, there is a good article in you can link it that I linked to explaining the ANSI standards. So if you want to do that, go over to the review and check it out. Uh, runtime on the highest setting is two hours. Of course, runtime on the lowest setting is like 50 days, but that's because there's nothing there. Uh, but basically it's like two hours, the medium settings, like six hours, stuff like that. You, there's a chart in the review so you can check it out. And I left it on, and it pretty much runs about two hours. Uh, I didn't actually time it, but it's pretty darn close. So you do get that. Uh, since I use it kind of more as not a tactical light, but just as a regular light, I usually don't leave it on the turbo setting uh, because I don't like want to turn it on and blind myself, basically. Uh, if I'm like actually going outside at night or something where I'm thinking I might, I just bump it up to the turbo setting and then turn it off so that if I need it, it's in there. Uh, there's some pictures of the brightness, highest brightness setting in there. Uh, I actually took a picture of my little Ford Ranger with the high beams on uh, and took a picture and then I turned them off and turned the light on and took a picture. And of course, it produces more light than the high beams of the vehicle. So, you know, if your lights turn off on your vehicle and you got a flashlight, you can drive by it for sure. Uh, like I said, it's more of an EDC light for me or for anybody. It does have a f more of a flood pattern to it, uh, which means the beam's more spread out. It's not really made for distance. And it's only got a 9,800 Candela rating at the 2550 lumen rating. So I didn't expect it to travel super far uh so in that case it doesn't really have a hot spot either uh inside you can see a hot spot but it's still nothing like other lights that have a high candela rating uh so that kind of makes the e9 actually work well in enclosed spaces like if you're in like this room and the lights are out and you turn it on it lights up the whole room great so without like blinding you from a hot spot if you reflect it off a white wall or something uh Power Attack actually rates the throw at 197 meters, uh, but we all know that that's not right. You might see a reflection of bright objects, you know, but you're not going to be able to make out much. Uh, I'd say max usable distance for this light's around 100 yards. Uh, even at 100, it's kind of you might be able to make out what somebody's holding, maybe depending on how large it is. Uh, it is a very white tinted light. Uh, so if it's foggy or smoky or something, you're going to have lots of reflection back at you, uh, especially on the turbo mode. But since it does have other modes, you can turn it down to help get through the fog or smoke. Uh, you know, it's like I said, for everyday use, I'd liked the beam pattern because I didn't really have to worry about it being a hot spot. Uh, there is a picture also in the review at the firearmsinsider.tv of the range where I'm a member at. Uh, so, and it's got 50 yards, hundred yard target stands. So you can go look at it and see what the light was like. And I pretty much, you know, that's an accurate representation. I didn't like bump up the brightness or anything on the camera or anything. So that's pretty much what it looks like. Uh, the E9 does use an aluminum body. Uh, it does make it pretty durable. They also type three hard anodize it. Uh, I have dropped it a few times on concrete. Not on purpose, but, you know, I think most of us here know we're 
notorious for dropping things. And well, when you're holding it in your mouth and trying to do something, <laughs> that happens. Uh, it's held up. It doesn't have any dents or anything in it. You know, the bezel does have some slightly aggressive cuts in it. So you can use it as an impact we- weapon if that's something you want to do with it. Of course, the lens is recessed back from the bezel to keep it from getting damaged. Uh, the light's knurled extensively for good grip. Uh, I actually appreciate the knurling. It's pretty strong, and you can get a good grip on it. Uh, the real rear tail cap is slightly protected, uh, not completely uh, the button does sit up just a hair past the end of the light. Uh, I don't really like this for two reasons. I can't set the light up and use it just as a, you know, candle, so to speak, because it'll fall over. And the other reason I don't really like it is, is it can turn on in your in your pocket, depending on how you're carrying it, which I have had that happen. So I know it for a fact can, can happen. Uh, just something to be wary at. Uh, I do carry it in my pocket most of the time. It does have a removable pocket clip. Uh, You know, I didn't really have any problems with the pocket clip, but because of the type it is, you can snag it and pull it off. I just pulled it off here on there. So it's just kind of just one of those type of pocket clips. So just know that, and that's kind of another thing. Uh, There is also a pocket holster, uh, (laughs) which... You know, I don't really care for uh, their pocket holster holds the light too too tight, and you literally have to like reef on it to pull it out. Uh, I mean, they throw it in, so if it's something like if you wanted to mount it on maybe a a chest rig or something like that, it's not, the light's not going to go anywhere. But then again, if you want it to come out easily, it's not going to do that either. Uh, it really just holds the light way too tight. Uh, you know, the E9, besides those, the pocket clip and the other ones that are could just be me, the button not being protected and stuff, does have a few, it does, did have a little other flaw from me. Uh, if back threads where the battery go get dirty or oily, the light does not like to go into the turbo mode. Uh, I noticed that because, you know, I was like, hey, this is a problem and I ask them about it. They're like, yeah, the threads are just dirty. Just clean them off. So, you know, basically clean them off every now and then. Maybe if you replace the battery instead of just charge it, clean it off when you do this. Uh, And I also noticed that when the battery is getting lower, uh, it doesn't like to go into the turbo mode. Uh, It just kind of goes past it. Uh, More like it doesn't have the turbo mode if you're using CR123 batteries. So that kind of explains the, the low battery on it. But besides all that, I was pretty surprised at how well I did like this light. Uh, For an EDC light, the beam pattern worked well. It is super bright. It does have good runtime. The super low, so if you have night vision or something like that for the task light function, could be useful too. Uh, It is a good all-around light. Uh, PowerTac makes a bunch of other lights also. So, you know, I'd go check them out and see what they have. Uh, they did tell me also that they're doing something with the clip for the next version. That's good to know. So for the Firearms Insider Review, eight key points. Of course, claim to fame. It's a rechargeable, high-output, tactical, handheld light. Target market is pretty much everyday carriers. Features and benefits, there's a bunch of them. Uh, it's got a Cree XHP50 white LED. It does come with the 18650, 3200 milliamp rechargeable battery. You can use the CR123s. It does have the magnetic USB charging. It comes with all those spare parts that I said. It is 5.43 inches long. Uh, The bezel diameter is 1 inch. The body diameter is 0.905 inches. And it weighs 3 ounces without the battery. And it is submersible to 2 meters for like a half hour or something like that. Uh, Other options, finishes, basically there are other versions uh, what others are saying is in there if you want to check it out. There's also a link to a YouTube video review. The price point, MSRP is $129.95. Uh, you can get it from them for $90.97 if you use the code GGR, uh, which is in the review. So if you want to do it there, that's good. So product availability is 
either power attack or you can get it at, on Amazon. Uh, we have a question on what the recoil rating is. <laughs> and I don't know if they even published that. Uh, so like I said, it, I, I've dropped it and that's about it. Uh, so the pros, the aggressive knurling, it is bright. Uh, it does have five brightness settings uh, and it is compatible with the CR one, two threes. I, you know, the holster's too tight for the cons. Uh, the pocket clip's pretty much a con for a lot of people. And I would like it about three quarters of an inch shorter since I carry it in my pocket. I don't know if you can do that because it's like the same light as like a stream light, same length. Uh, I did give it you a... You could use an 18350 battery. Right, it, to make a shorter light, correct. Yeah. But in the 18650s, you kind of limited to yeah you're kind of stuck with the length with that battery yep uh i did give it a score of seven and a half which is good uh it has flaws but it's i still really liked it it was bright i couldn't destroy it really so so there is that uh you guys got any questions on it yeah well not really questions i have comments for right. one i do like the way they um did their change of brightness settings yes because i'm a fan of all the way on or all the way off right but like with the stream lights that i have oh geez probably eight of now (laughs) correct you got to 10 tap those to to get through them yeah so that's kind of neat that you can you know do it differently uh that candela rating just kills it for me though right and i could see a use for it like on a shotgun maybe it's well, going to be used only in the home, right? But for a handheld, eh, I want, I want, I want more throw than that. And, and but I, I don't hate it. Yeah, and that's and that's the thing that. is, it, for what it is, it's it's a decent light. And yeah, I was a little. That's the thing is, I was kind of like, nah. But yeah, it's it's been a good light. Uh, now, like you said, if they they did after I sent them a link to the review, they asked if there was stuff. I'd change. I did say, besides other stuff, that if they could put some sort of like 10 tap it to lock it out. So once you're in the mode you want, you can lock out the side button, you know, something, something like yeah, that. I, I thought, don't even mind the side button, honestly, as long as that tail cap does what you want when you want it. I don't right. mind that side button. Yeah. If they would uh, maybe offer something with 30,000 Candela. Yeah, with well, that same lumen rating. Well, they have other that lights works. that have higher candela rating, and the, so it's just this is just kind of their, I think, semi normal. I mean, I've got a bunch light. of those lights, and every time you turn it on and turn it off, it goes through a different setting. So it'll go high, medium, low, strobe, and off, and all this other crap. I, I have it one of those. Sounds nice because you turn it on, you turn it off. Yep, and it's in the same setting every time you turn it on. Turn yeah. off. See, like I it's, like that. It, it's it's on this setting. I turn it off. It's still on this setting. Uh, it, if I because yeah, some of them are pain because it's like you turn it right. to high and you want it on high. It's like oh, well, right. last time you turned it on it was on low, so now it's going right. to go to strobe. So See, you got to click it a couple. Yeah, times. like like hey. now it's on low, and then I can cycle it up and oh look, it's on high again. And then also yeah, did did you happen to measure the uh, diameter of the uh, tail cap of that thing? Where it screws on or the diameter of the tail cap? No, where it screws on. No, but... Because I'm wondering, if it takes an 18650 battery, I'm wondering if it's compatible with the I th- Theorem products, I think like it, switchback or the... I think it might be. Switchback without the hook that we talked and, about last and, week. And here's why, because I'm showing you a picture, but it's got this little space at the end. So where do you want me to measure? Can you see the video? I can. So like yeah, there? No, yeah, so pretty much right there. If it's like an inch, it's it neat. should be compatible. I I get 0.925. Uh, and below it, below the O-ring is, point, yeah, basically the same. Uh, outer diameter of the tail cap is like one point, basically an inch. I'd have to go on Theorem's website, but I'm going to assume that's compatible with either their large or small right. uh, model. Yeah, I was. yeah, I have a, I have an issue um, with the tail cap itself uh, protruding past the edge. Uh, same thing, I had the problem with the nightstick that I have comes on in your pocket way too easy. Yep. I can't use it to stand up and use it as a work light. Yep. Um, yeah, if it's just going on a firearm, 
like it's going to be mounted on the side of my shoddy. I still have an issue with that protruding and bumping something else while you're moving. Um, I want to be in charge of that. You know what I mean? I want to be in charge of that at all times. And truthfully, with something with a throw like that, that's definitely a good work light. They just have to work on that the, the button for me. I like the on off whatever setting you have it on. Yep. This is the LA police gear that I have right here. And, you know, they have an alphabet soup also for the name of their, yeah, <laughs> this particular lights. light. And it's, um, I don't like that whole cycling thing. So yeah, if you can, like, this is where it's at now, but then I turn it off. If I just momentary tap it, it goes to another level. And I'm like, yeah. I, I wanted to turn it off. How do I turn it? All right, hold on. All right. I have to hold it and then it'll, oh, that's no look i want on and off man <laughs> yeah i yeah. want on and off yeah i have other flashlights like the one you have similar and yeah, it's it, it's it's annoyingly horrible yes uh and and that's like that is one thing that's nice about some of the other like the nightstick you have to hold the button somehow down or something but yeah i do like that for this <laughs> Uh, that, that, that's one of the things I did. I'm hoping that if they make a better clip, they, they do raise this button up the, the protection around the button. Cause they don't even have yeah, to so go very with far. The button, like what with Tony's talking about, can you set the light on the tail cap? No, it wants to fall off. It's it just enough. Up? It's just enough that it'll fall over. Yeah. Uh, and there's, there's pros and cons for that. Honestly, exactly. For use with a therm switchback. Yeah, I want that button all the way out because, but for my use case, even though I use that switchback, man, I like to be able to set it on the tail cap. Yep. And it not fall over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's kind of a, I mean, I, I, I don't hate the light. I think, I think they got some good features going on with it. I think they could tweak it a little bit and, and get a really outstanding light. Yeah. I, th- I, th- um, I think they're on the right track. Uh, with it so that that's good to know and yeah like i said it's for like the stuff i use it for like i use it like to look behind stuff and stuff like that kind of like tony does but then it it is still bright enough that i can turn it on the turbo mode throw it in my pocket and then if i need to pull it out and use it for something mostly bright it is bright i mean it's you know the other issue I have is how hot does it get if you leave it on? It gets Let's pretty say, darn warm. <laughs> yeah, and that's another. <laughs> see, um, <laughs> again, I'm moving. My wife's friend was here, and she needed a flashlight to get in one of the closets, older house. Um, and I was like, all right, here. Here's my flashlight. It was a nightstick. And I was like, put it on the step. Or I gave her a box, I punched a hole in it, and it was like a projector, right? Yeah. And I was like, put it in this, set it behind you. Oh, I got this. And she takes it, <laughs> puts, puts it on oh, her geez. neck, and holds it between them. And I'm like, I, I told you to put it in the box or on the step. I got this. Uh, okay. She got a nice tattoo, how, right? How long did oh, it last? Dude. Oh, it lasted a little longer than I thought it would. So I'm just sitting there, right? I'm supposed to be helping, and I'm just looking at her like this. Okay, yeah, I told you yeah, what to do. You don't see, want to do it. Have a nice day. Like this is I waited. She, all of a sudden she's like, "Ow!" Yeah, <laughs> like like this one's been on for what? A minute or so. It doesn't usually uh-huh. get much hotter than this. It's hot, but I can still hold it. Now if I stick my hand over it, my thumb will get too hot or whatever's over the light uh, will get too hot. Yeah. Well, I will say that the uh with it getting hot thing it it it's it's a feature. It's a hand warmer because <laughs> no, when it turns on in your pocket, yeah, oh yeah, you want to know pretty quick. <laughs> oh, you know, <laughs> my lights on. <laughs> oh, bro, that nightstick, man. I'm driving, and because of the extended <laughs> button, it came on. Now I'm drinking my coffee. You're like, what is going on in my pocket, <laughs> bro? Um, okay, this was during the sh- COVID shutdown, so I had brand new batteries in it. And this is when I'm, you know, no one's on the road. So I'm doing like 98 miles an hour. And all of a sudden, my pocket gets really uncomfortably high. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa. So now t- Tony's doing 98 miles an hour, swerving all over the road. Yeah, trying and get- I'm trying to get this fire out of my pocket. <laughs> so, yeah, this is it's a self-correcting problem. But, man, unsuspecting. 
having your pants almost catch on fire. That's the problem. You don't want to have to correct. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, it's not Olight hot. Giggity. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you mean it won't blow up? Wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait! It won't blow up, and they 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 don't what chart give everybody money to release the same review on the same day, dude. So how much? Did anyway, they pay for you for this uh, review next comment, there, Chad. They just gave me the uh, light. That's all they did. <laughs> um, no, no, it's ninety something uh, bucks, right? Some, yeah, with, uh, they gave us a discount the code. <laughs> there's some comments about the exposed switch and. So I'll say this about an exposed switch. One, for use without a switch back, yeah, no exposed switch. I want the tail cap to cover it. But when you're using a therm switch back on it, I know dudes who literally send their light, their tail caps off to machine shops to have it turned down. Right, because you can't because get it. Because of how much otherwise. easier it is to use. It's, I, I, I'm of the opinion that I, I have not had mine turned down. I, I carry a Streamlight HLX, if anyone's wondering. I don't turn mine down because I can just constant on and flip. But it, there is a, that is one of those deals where there is a slight matter of personal preference. So it usually works for me is a stupid argument. But in this case, I do think it has a, a slight bit of validity. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it does. So. Now, if you're not a flashlight guy and you go, why are these guys talking about a flashlight? Because if I'm not a flashlight guy, I just want the thing to work when it works. Uh, I'm not into every feature of it. I want to turn it on and be able to use it. I don't want it to turn on on its own. And, of course, because of the price of these batteries, they're really expensive, too. I don't need them burning out because they came on in my toolbox or my bag. Like goes on, like goes off. Like goes on, like goes off. It was funny when he was talking about, of course, it will use, you know, 123s. I was going to interject and say, stop being poor and use 18650s. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute. No, you know what? Be poor and use 18650s because they're rechargeable. Mm-hmm. Don't use 123s. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Well, that was the review of the PowerTech E9. So now we'll get into the product spotlight and discussion. Uh, and here's here comes the red dot. Because everybody else is doing it, Ameriglow has introduced their Haven red dot, miniature red dot. MSRP is $379. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking too. <laughs> uh, basically, it does fit the RMR pattern. So at least they got that down. Uh, it does run a CR2032 battery. Uh, it comes with, you know, the stuff you need. Uh, typical features, it's got a side-loading battery. It says intuitive controls. Basically, there's a plus-minus. There's 11 brightness settings. And then there is a carry lockout mode. Hey, these go to 11. And there's a lockout mode. So basically, it locks it to whatever position so the buttons don't work if you happen to hit them. Uh, of course, the rest of it is oh, and for Zane... I ask them about this. They say perfect zero adjusters, which doesn't mean anything, but they do have actual audible clicks. Oh, thank God. Uh, <laughs> Looking uh, at you, Swamp Fox. Uh huh. But, you know, I'm like, yeah, it's also, what, 100 bucks more than the Swamp Fox. Uh, but they do. There's, there's, a, there's one thing that I actually sent them an, an, needing an explanation because I couldn't find it anywhere. Besides all that, they have a 12-hour smart electronics, 12-hour runtime followed by 12-hour motion-activated auto-on. And it's approximately two-year battery life with that in mid-setting. But I was like, I didn't quite understand what they were trying to say. And so I I would ask them about it. And so they basically sent me this back. It says, and I'm just going to read what they sent because it's way easier the power protect electronic function is essentially a power saving function. When the optic is turned on, the Haven will run for 12 hours constantly on without any interruption. Uh, so it's on for 12 hours straight. Following those 12 hours, the dot turns off and the motion sensor takes over for the additional 12 hours. If the optic senses any motion in those 12 hours, like you pick it up or you're walking around or anything, uh, the dot turns back on and restarts the entire 12 hour cycle and 12 other 12 hour cycle. 
Uh, but if there is no motion detected in the second 12 hours, in the 12 hours during the motion thing, the optic will actually turn itself off. Uh, and then you have to turn, you have to physically turn it back on. That is way too complicated and stupid. <laughs> but I, I get it because now, you know, if you have somebody, you want it on all the time, you're running for duty use, it's on just like an always on one, but then it'll actually turn itself off eventually when you're not using it. I, I get it. I don't like, I, I, I understand the point, but I don't like it. Yeah, well, nobody said you had to. If you got the, <laughs> if you got a quote unquote, you know, I'm sure it's trademarked, but for lack of a better word, shake awake type function, just use it. Why would you? Why turn it off after 12 hours? That's that's dumb. I got gotcha. you. Like so, whatever. <laughs> exactly. I, it it is running a three and a half MOA dot. It's aluminum construction, of course. It's one MOA adjustments. Uh, you can submerse it to one meter. It's 1.78 inches by 1.24 inches by 1.11 inches in sight. Uh, 11, those 11 settings, two of them are night vision. Uh, it is red. It is, that's the only color it seems to come in right now. But, yeah, that, there it is. Uh, I couldn't really find, and I probably just overlooked it, what the actual size of the window is. Uh, it didn't really tell me, so... I mean, I looked, and I was like, does it actually say? And I'm like, it did somewhere, and I couldn't find it. Oh, lens size, 1.1 by 0.75 inches or 28 by 19 millimeters. So it's a good size lens. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that, I mean, it's standard, good dot size. Yeah. Um, the, it's going to come down to the durability. I it, look forward yeah. to watching Aaron Cowan drop, drop it. it. Uh -huh. on the drop zone and we'll see if that lens shatters and then that yeah, I mean that's what it comes down to with with these pistol optics are, are they durable because right they're 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 durable at this point we've figured it out how to make them durable if you listen to previous episode unless you're brand new you will know I broke a hollow sun which I don't, <laughs> apparently that's rare but it broke in a manner that was still usable Trigicons are reliable. There are reliable optics out there. If it's that, sweet. Yeah. If it's not, you can get a Holosun for the same price that or less. Know, they're coming in at a price point that they're It you, better you be better all be, of these. You better your your stuff better be, you know, good to go at that price point. If you're coming in at 130 bucks, you know, hey, if it breaks, well, you know, you paid 130 bucks. When you're coming in at this price point, it better it better work. So, I, I mean, that's going to be the deciding fact. I, I'm not a big fan of this 12 hours, then 12 hours, then shut off, because if this is something you want to put in like a a, a quick release, you know, nightstand kind of gun thing, it might sit there for months until you actually need it, and then right. that's a problem, yep. right? Yep. Uh, I don't know. If it's a duty gun or EDC gun, that's probably never going to be a problem for you. I don't know. Either like all the way on or if it's – I've gotten used to this shake awake kind of feature, but why even turn it off? If it's off, it's off. Why? Why? I don't understand the the thought process of. Yeah, that. I, I I get you because, like in like I have a swamp fox here that has the shake awake. It's here for review. They also sent the iron sides, uh, so I wouldn't destroy it. I think they didn't trust me. <laughs> uh, but then, like my hollow send the five hundred seven, I have it set to always on. I, I mean. That's just how it's said. It's like, well, I guess I don't really Yeah, me really too. Need... I, I, I've i played with the uh, – and I've talked about this before, so I'm sorry for regular listeners for bringing it up again. But I have, like, tried to, like, pick it up extremely slowly just to see if I could defeat it, and I was able to do it once. But in all reality, it, it, it's going to come on. But, yeah, mine's set to constant on, too, because I, I just – I'll replace the battery once a year. The ba what, how much does a 2032 battery cost? Like it depends. If you buy them on Amazon, four, they're dirt cheap. Five bucks. And that's if yeah, you're buying them at 7-Eleven or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> if you're buying them at Walmart, like four or five bucks. If you buy them in bulk, or I think like Big Tech's Outdoors will will like give you the batteries if you like Bot. spend a certain amount of money with them or something. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, yeah um, about 10 of them at a time. Um Here's my pack. Here's my package. Um, 
Ooh. I agree with you. Thanks. For those not listening, it was a package of batteries. <laughs> 20, 2032s. It is a package yeah. of 2032s. But um, I agree. There's a saying, when things go wrong, they go wrong in threes. And if I ever have to use my red dot fire <laughs> equipped firearm, I don't want to have the shake weight feature screw the pooch and it not come on. So just leave it on, bro. There's just one less thing that can go wrong. There you go. So, yeah. It, it, batteries are cheap, man. Like, whatever. Yeah. That's, I, I, I got you. I will say that they got the red, they got the dot size right. I, I think a, a three, three and, three and a half. Inch, is, yeah. Or three to four minute dots. Uh, it's a good size. I don't know. We'll see. And, and again, it's all going to be about the durability. It's going to come down to durability. Exactly, which is makes makes sense. So that was the Mariglo Haven. Uh, next up, we have something that probably won't have much discussion because, well, it it is what it is. But Faxon has come out with their F twenty two receiver. MSRP is one hundred eighty five bucks. This is basically for you people that want to build ten twenty twos. It's just a stripped receiver. What do you mean, you people? <laughs> Well, I know Zane doesn't ever want to build a 1022. <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> so anybody besides Zane that might want to do this. Uh, but, yeah, they came out with one. Uh, it's got a built-in pick rail on it, uh, which is good. Uh, it is aluminum, hard coat anodized. It comes with a chromoly steel V-block, uh, V-block screws, screws, and a rubber bolt bumper. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, it does not come with a bolt or anything. I'm expecting being faxed in that eventually they'll probably come out with a bolt. But in the meantime, you'd have to buy somebody else's bolt or use your own. Uh, I'm just glad more people are coming out with these. Uh, I want the price to come down. Uh, I like 1022s, unlike Zane and Sean it appears, appears so. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it's out there. I don't really have anything else to say. Faxon makes decent stuff, so I'm sure it's decent. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I agree with the facts and makes decent stuff, man. They they make decent products and they don't break the bank. <laughs> and 22s are stupid. <laughs> Does it have a hole in the back of the receiver so you can actually run a cleaning rod through it that way without taking it all the way down or what? Uh, yeah, if you look at the pictures on there, there's a hole in the back of the receiver. All right, there you go. There you go. Uh, that's all, uh, There is? No, there's no, not. There's not. No? Oh, mm. I look at the wrong picture. I like yeah. the, for, the front picture. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, you got, ooh, that's going to be fun to clean. Yeah, that's going to be, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm I kinda... love how Rob came in all snarky about, well, if you look at the picture, and he's like, oh, no, oh, my, I didn't look at the <laughs> 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 Okay, so this is one of the, 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 the. Now, this does have a flaw, in my opinion, because it should have that hole in the back or a hole that's plugged somehow. Uh <laughs> Somebody in the show notes ask if we know what a drill is. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, you can do it. Oh yeah, yeah. You can do it definitely. Yeah. Hey, I I do, but I like my dog. So. Oh, <laughs> you're talking about drilling a different. Never mind. It's still a hole. So yeah. Uh huh. Okay, so that was the Faxon FF22 receiver. Uh, like I said, it was going to be pretty quick. Uh, next up, Strike Industries. Uh, this is not their adjustable pistol grip so zane might actually thank god <laughs> uh they i'm sorry strike i love you guys but that thing was terrible <laughs> I, I you know i'm like hey it interested me but this is something that i know is is probably re- pretty good they came out with the p365 strike slide msrp is 259.95 this of course is for your sig 365 uh, they made it from 17.4 stainless. Uh, they did cut it. It has its pre-cut for the shield standard or Dr. Noblex footprint. So you can mount a red dot on it. Uh, basically, the miniature red dot. I do believe you lose the rear and sight. I think that's what we're calling the industry standard at this point at the, for right. the miniature sights. Because that's the RMRC. That's the Holosun 507K. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and I, that's, I think we've uh, finally agreed on this footprint for this size gun. I I think we we're, have. We're still in disagreement on, uh, I guess, on the 
bigger one. Yeah, but, but we're, I think we finally come to an agreement on this size. I, I, what is the correct footprint? I think you are correct. You do lose the rear sight uh, by doing that. It doesn't. It does come with a cover plate, so that has a rear sight built into it, which is kind of cool. Uh, it does have two slots in the front, uh, one for looks, but they also said you can run the SAS ported barrel through it, uh, so that that will work. Uh, looks like you can get it in black or FDE. I think the FDE is like ten bucks more. Not that it really matters. Uh, it includes the slide, a cover plate, cover plate screws, charging handle, left and right, uh, the screws for the doctor, the Vortex Venom, the Fast Fire MR DS Viper, Shield Leopold Delta Point, Loophole Delta Point. Uh, so maybe it fits all of those too. I don't know since it includes screws for them. Uh, looks kind of cool. Uh, it says it's got a, aggressive serrations front and rear, which it does. I'd, I like the strike slide for the Glock 19 that I have. This, so I'm, this is probably similar. Uh, you know, besides that, it's heat treated, nitride coated. It's made in the USA. You know, I guess it's compatible with, of course, the SAS parted barrel. Grip modules, standard SAS X, XL, uh, but of course those require the shorter 365 barrel. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I like I like their Glock slides, and this is the 365 slide. So there you go. Uh, you guys got anything on it? The SAS model is that the one with that stupid? Yes. Yep. Okay. But it's got a portable well, barrel. That's a, I bet that's a confusing sight picture when you put a red dot on top of that. Well, you did. Um, <laughs> you're a co-witness, and that's for dang sure. <laughs> yes. We got two dots. Which one do we use? Well, I think um, this anyways. slides for the SAS users so they can scrap the one with the built-in. Yeah, you put a piece of tape <laughs> over that nonsense in the back. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, the more, like we've probably said a thousand times, the more companies that are producing stuff the mo better because it just drives innovation and drives price down so cool i don't i don't know I don't. and it also five, but it, it also like takes it. it out of the realm of custom yes you know what i mean all of a sudden now i don't have to uh have somebody's overpriced i don't know you know i mean just send it to us and we'll cut it and, and we'll put all these cuts on it and it's going to cost more than the handgun itself initially. Right. I mean, it's like, yo, bro, this this can all be done on on a CNC machine and put out in mass and still look cool. Yeah, for two hundred and sixty so, bucks. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and obviously, again, reliability being the key, which remains to be seen. But mm -hmm. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt and assume they've done their homework. And as long as it's reliable and works, great. Yep. I think it's I think it's good. Well, that was the Strike Industries 365 Strike Slide. Uh, and yes, there's a reason why we have the Ferrum Forge Lackey XL. MSRP is $110. It is a fixed blade knife. The reason is, is I'm, I keep looking at fixed blade knives to put on a plate carrier. <laughs> and so I keep looking to see what's out there and I keep running across them. So, hey, let's, let's, talk about this one instead uh you can either get it in green or black g10 handle you can either get it in d2 or 9 cr 18 mov steels uh it's a 4.6 inch blade uh the handle is 4.3 inches uh total length is 8.9 so just under nine inches it only has a 4.3 inch cutting edge which you know hey uh not that big of a deal uh, it's the blade itself is 1.2 inches tall, basically, and what is it? 0.16 inches wide. Uh, handle thickness is a half inch. Uh, handle width is 0.88 inches. Uh, it comes with a Kydex sheath. Uh, weighs 4.7 ounces for the knife. Uh, the sheath itself weighs another three ounces, basically. Uh, it is made in China. Uh, it's got a stonewashed finish, and it is a, just a straight, plain, pretty much drop point blade. Uh, it do, looks like it has some gimping, jimping on the top. Uh, it does have a lanyard hole in the back, and like a finger groove, or if you want to choke up on it, two of them. 
seems since it's D2 and if it's a fixed blade, I believe it's a full tang. Uh, so you're not worried about the handle breaking off. You know, for a fixed blade, I like it better than the one with the short blade that we talked about the other day, which was about the same length. Uh, so, yeah. As far as these, I think this is also a Civivi knife. Yeah, you know, I don't, I, I don't know. Well, I know the short one was. It was by Civivi, right. even though it was done by Ferrum Forge. This is the Ferrum Forge, and I don't know who makes them or if it's like a separate company. Supposedly, well, anyway, supposedly Ferrum Forge makes really nice knives. Um, I think it's a little, little expensive for what it is, um, just because it's a D2 knife. D2 folders are like in the mid-60s. Mm-hmm. How is this a fixed blade with zero mechanism, <laughs> but it costs twice as much? So, yeah, I'm, I'm calling BS on that um, because I can get something else. It, it supposedly has no hot spots on it because they rounded it off well. But for twice the money, it should really have a better blade still, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't have the show notes up. What's the, um, what, what is the blade guard like on it to protect your hand from... <laughs> not very much it's either. not a lot yeah then that's a hard pass for me man especially on a fixed blade like you got yeah so you, you have a fixed fixed blade broken blades right like so i like fixed blades but i carry a broken blade um i just if i want a fixed blade knife it's because i want to do work with it that i'm concerned that a folders going to fold on me which means i'm going to be much more aggressive with the knife which means i want something to keep my hand from slight especially if it's got some so. sort of a fluid slippery whatever on it whether that be water mud blood whatever on it Wet. i don't want to so. i don't want to grab that d2 or 9 mov 13 <laughs> xyz oh my goodness that FN that's really annoying thing which is a decent blade still also uh-huh. um but yeah I, I so it sounds like this should be around 60 bucks for the knife no nah, probably yep. 90 msrp not 110 no, which no, means you'll get it for what? 70 bucks yeah yeah that that makes more sense again you you have nothing. It, it, it's a it's yeah. a shank, dog. There is no reason I should pay that much yeah. money for that there's blade. No mechanical, steel. There's no me- mechanical mechanisms in the thing Correct. to have it fold out, fold in. It's a one solid piece of metal with two. Uh, and, and the, the other thing is, thing is with a, kept on it. The, the thing is with a you know quote unquote shank like Tony brought up again. I I I don't want my hand sliding across that exactly. And for a like a centerline fixed blade which I know a lot of dudes are keen on. I know and if you follow Craig Douglas, he talks about push daggers and centerline fixed blades, things like that. You know, you're using that. If it's a defensive knife, you're using it in a manner that you, it's, it's in and out, in and out, in and out. Well, if you're in and out, in and out, in and out, there's probably going to be some liquids going on on the hands and the, the handle. And um, Yeah, so you want a better you know, guard. Yeah. I got you. Uh, yeah. Now, if if you're using this for trying and and stuff like I use my knives for, they're not supposed to be used for. It's probably fine. But for me, a fixed blade is a fighting knife. A broken blade's a utility knife. So. I feel that there there are some good fixed blade utility knives out there. Obviously, but for me, it it starts with the cold steel GI Tanto that you can beat the living crap out of, and it's like. And that's what thirty dollars for that, but it, the handle's not really great. Um, the handle's but terrible it does, on it. <laughs> okay, the handle is horrible. Um, but again, you're you're thirty dollars and under, mm-hmm. and it has a guard. So when you step up above that, I want an actual significant step up above that if I'm paying more money. Right. You know what I'm saying? I do. And and, and a lot of these aren't. <laughs> yeah. They, they aren't. They, they miss with a lot of stuff. And I'm not one of those dudes to go to the Lynn Thompson school of everything has to be a fighting knife, but everything has to be able to, especially when you're in the fixed blade, it has to be able to fit, in my opinion, in a couple of different categories. Hard use is one of them. And that's why I have, uh, damn, what do you call that? Uh, 550 cord uh, wrapped yeah. around mine. 
You know what I mean? It, it It's wrapped around my so it actually has a good grip. It has a good purchase on it. This, I, I looked at it, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, price is too high, and it's not what it's supposed to be, in my opinion. I mean, even a skinning knife, it's not there. It's mm-hmm. maybe a food prep knife, maybe. I think there's just really? better. Really? A food prep knife? No. Uh, I think you might have a knife in a prison. Sorry. <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> uh, depends on who you're talking to. Yeah, you, you can. Dude, I can't even remember. I can't even remember uh, what the name of this knife, this fixed blade that I occasionally carry is. K Bar makes it, but it's not a K Bar. The TDI. Yes, the TDI. And I think yep. this thing's like fifty bucks. And mm-hmm. you know, it, it, it for what I need it for, it, it it's, it's fine. Yes. I had it's to like upgrade the sheath to it because the sheath it comes with is utter garbage. Yep. Um, you know, and it just, I just, I, I don't know, man. It's. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't I imagine you. using this knife to, to process uh, any kind of game or anything like that. I mean, it, yeah. Didn't have the belly for it, right? Yeah. No, I mean, no, you probably cut yourself or worse shit. Cut too oh, and the other thing, me. the sheath, no. the sheath, uh, it has to have a good sheath. And I think that's where a lot of these things fall down to. You got to be able to use your knife. You have to. You have to use it. You can't just get it and stick it on a piece of gear and goes. It fits and everything is fine. You really want to use it and find out what the good, the bad is. Um, and you'll quickly for your find specific out if you, use. if you have a bad sheath too. I mm-hmm. mean, mount it somewhere and pull it in and uh, pull it in or out a few times. You'll be like, oh, this sucks. Or, yeah, the first time I I used to carry this TDI. In a in a uh, handle down position on my offside, and with the original sheath, I got on my truck one time and it hit the ground, and I'm like, "Well, that's not very convenient." Yep. So that that the yeah. and I've had this thing since 2010. It's all beat up, but I do like the comment we have about always carry knife casers, cheesecake, or someone that <laughs> needs to be stabbed. Right. That's a good. Yeah. Good words to live by. Well, you're, you're going to carry a knife in case there's cheesecake. That's assuming you're going to tri- sh- share the cheesecake with somebody else. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Stay away from my cheesecake. Yeah. I because see I you. have a knife. No, you carry a knife case or cheesecake. I'm trying to get your cheesecake. <laughs> you have to cut them. <laughs> get away from my cheesecake, sir. Yeah, we have to sh- ensure there are no misunderstandings about who this cheesecake <laughs> this is. Exactly. My cheesecake. My cheesecake. My cheesecake. <laughs> okay, that was... <laughs> That was the Ferrum Forge Lackey XL. Uh, we do have some listener feedback. I only stuck it in here because he's picking on Zane. Uh, <laughs> this is from Steve. Uh, he's somewhat local to me. Somewhat. Uh, it says, a week late on this podcast, but tell Zane that opioids and podcasting do not mix. Over the course of the podcast, his voice changed from normal to half speed. Otherwise, thanks for continuing to do a great job. I keep trying other podcasts, not really looking for something better. There isn't. But in addition to, many other podcasts vary between infomercials to story hour. You guys have relevant content, good insight, and great rapport. Thanks, Steve. We appreciate it, except maybe Zane. Uh, it might have been one of those days where he was drinking too much. Now, so here, here's the – I appreciate your feedback, <laughs> sir. And um, here, here's, here's the deal. Uh, for the last eight years, I've worked night shift, and over the last month, I'm trying to <clears throat> get used to working a normal man's hour job. And so now, by the time this show comes on, I'm like ready for bed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting tired because <laughs> I went from being awake till five in the morning to waking up at five in the morning, and it, it's a rough transition. <laughs> oh yeah, it so, takes a little bit of work. Yeah, we're we're uh, we're working on it. But uh, thank you for your feedback, and I I, I get it because. I'm pretty sure I'm one of the last couple podcasts I fell asleep in the middle of it. I, I think um, you did because you just disappeared and you were yeah. still on, but we're like, I wonder what sure happened I to just Zane. Went to sleep. Probably Chad was talking and I was like, this boring. Mu- I can't say that word. Never mind. Uh, but, anyways, you know, yeah. hey, thanks for the feedback. I'm working on it. I'm trying. I'm trying here, man. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, like we said, thanks for, thanks for your show feedback uh we we do appreciate it tony i don't know what's going on but tell us what is november 22nd my birthday 
we're having a diversity shoot at Recoil Range in in Monroe, New Jersey. So, what is Recoil, it? New Jersey, hmm? one hundred seventy eighth this year. What? Yeah, uh, same age as the United States Marine Corps. I'm one hundred forty six years old. So it's <laughs> not awesome. two hundred forty six. No, 246. <laughs> I was going to say, you got that wrong. He's so old, he can't remember how old he is. Hey, listen, after 146 years, you stop counting. Okay. But, uh, yes. So, it's going to be great. Uh, I'm going to have fun, because it's my birthday. And, yes, I'm saying it like that on purpose. Um, so, please, come out. Recoil range. I'm going to put it up this week. Uh, I'm going to actually make an announcement and make some videos this week. And I'm going to push it really hard because I want to see you guys there. I can't wait to have another diversity shoot. I'm going to bring some cool guns, even though I just moved. I really want to get in on this. We've already made the prize bags up, mainly because I wanted to get everything ready to go for the rest of the events for the rest of the year. So I wanted to make sure everything was good to go for you guys. So look forward to it. And I had uh, my wife's friend help me make the bag bags, and every bag is like got like $110 worth of stuff in it, mainly because she went a little nuts when I walked out of the room. <laughs> and so for a $5 ticket, you're going to get really cool stuff, but you know, by twenty dollars worth anyway. Help a brother out. All right, so that's what's going on. DiversityShoot.com. If you want to help us out, if you want to purchase swag, you can go to DiversityShoot.com. Get your Lovetron shirts if you want to get uh, the limited edition because we're almost out. I think we have less than twelve patches left with the two A four E bubbles patch. So jump on that, please sell them out. I just want to be able to brag that we sold them all out. So I really appreciate it if you guys help us out. And as always, thank you for listening to me on this show, talk about the diversity shoot. Thank you for all those guys out there that support us. Uh, you can find me on Simon Says Train on Facebook. You can find me on The Second is for Everyone on Facebook, Simon Says Train on IG, and Second for Everyone on Twitter. That's it. So next week, we're going to have our Christmas gift guide, as we said, if these guys can actually read the emails I send them and do something in the show notes. But hey, you get it. Uh, You can send questions, comments, or feedback to us at gungearreview at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us an iTunes review or send us feedback or whatever you feel like doing. Check out all the other great shows on the Firearms Radio Network at firearmsradio.tv. Don't forget to visit the Firearms Insider at firearmsinsider.tv. Uh, check us out on Facebook and Instagram at Firearms Insider. And as always, thank you for listening to the largest pound for pound podcast on the network. And we are out. If you've enjoyed this edition of the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Podcast, then go to firearmsradio.tv to hear more firearm-related shows.